In this lecture, we will develop a systematic framework for understanding how diagnostic tests influence clinical decision making. We'll do so in a common language that is shared among physicians and machine learning practitioners. Using the concepts of Bayes' theorem and likelihood ratios, we'll learn to measure the utility of a diagnostic test in a rigorous, repeatable manner. This foundation will guide our thinking in many subsequent discussions of machine learning applications in diagnostic imaging. Now, our objectives are to grasp the concepts of probability, likelihood, and odds to begin establishing a common language and thinking process between physicians and machine learning practitioners, understand Bayes' theorem as a systematic approach to clinical decision making, and introduce the likelihood ratio, a key diagnostic performance metric that will guide our development and assessment of machine learning applications. Ultimately, these concepts will help us generate focused discussions and or questions when brainstorming ideas with a multidisciplinary team. First, a few important concepts and definitions that we'll need going forward. Probability. Probability is a measure of the chance that an event will occur, quantified as a number between 0 and 1. An outcome is a possible result of a probabilistic experiment. Probability is calculated as follows. For a given experiment, we take the number of times an outcome of interest occurs and divide it by the total number of all outcomes. Let's take a more concrete example. Let's say we're interested in calculating the probability of a disease being present. In this instance, we have a total number of patients in a particular experiment uh, equaling 100. The number of patients who have the disease of interest is equal to 20. To find the probability that the patient has the disease, we simply take the number of patients with the disease and divide it by the total number of patients. This gives us a probability of 0.20. 20%. Loosely speaking, a probability of 0 indicates impossibility, and a probability of 1 indicates certainty. Conversely, we can calculate the probability of the disease being absent by taking the complement of the probability of disease being present. That's simply 1 minus the probability of disease being present. Now let's talk about likelihood. Likelihood is the probability of the observed data given a hypothesis. Let's take a concrete example. Say we interpret a chest x-ray and we see a consolidation in the right middle lobe. This is our observed data. What is the probability of this observation given our hypothesis that the disease is present? We could also ask, what is the probability of this observation given our hypothesis that the disease is absent? Note that the vertical bar is a mathematical symbol which is read as given. For example, probability that the test is positive, given that the disease is positive. Now, if we took the ratio of these two conditional probabilities, we end up with the positive likelihood ratio. Let's now repeat the exercise for a chest radiograph with no abnormal findings, that is a normal chest radiograph. What is the probability of a normal exam given our hypothesis that the disease is present? Again, we can ask, what is the probability of a normal exam given our hypothesis that the disease is absent? If we took the ratio of these two conditional probabilities, we end up with a negative likelihood ratio. The distinction between probability and likelihood is important and somewhat nuanced. We will discuss this issue separately in a later lecture to avoid unnecessary confusion at this stage. For now, just remember that there is a distinction between probability and likelihood. Odds are simply the ratio of the probability of an event happening to the probability of it not happening. Here is the mathematical description of this. The odds of disease present is equal to the probability of the disease being present divided by the probability of the disease being absent. Which, as we saw earlier, this is equal to the probability of the disease being present over 1 minus the probability of the disease being present. Note that we can convert back and forth from probability to odds using the following equations. Probability is simply odds over 1 plus the odds. Now let's see how these concepts apply to everyday clinical decision making. The following individuals will serve in our motivating example. We have a patient, a consulting physician, and a radiologist. Susan, a young woman, visits the local ER with symptoms of cough and fever. Her implicit expectation is that the medical team will render the most likely diagnosis given her history, signs and symptoms, and diagnostic test results, and deliver the appropriate treatment. We will now need a systematic way of framing this problem. 
and Bayes' theorem is just the tool we need. The intuition behind this equation is as follows. We have a prior belief about the probability that a disease is present, here expressed in terms of odds. We then will use the result of our diagnostic examinations to update both the direction and magnitude of our belief, that is, our results will influence whether we believe the presence of a particular disease is more or less likely, and the degree of influence that this examination has on our belief can range from small to large. This notion is captured in this term, the likelihood ratio, which we will further discuss later. Our updated belief about the probability of disease presence is called the posterior belief. Again, here it is expressed as odds to make the math simple. Here is a concrete example. Dr. A, the emergency physician, evaluates Susan by performing a history and physical. Using this information, in addition to his knowledge of local disease prevalence and years of clinical experience, he generates a semi-quantitative estimate of the pretest probability of disease. In this case, the most likely disease is bacterial pneumonia. For simplicity, we will treat any other explanation for Susan's symptoms, including viral URIs, etc., as not bacterial pneumonia, and this would be included in the denominator of our odds, i.e. 1 minus the probability of bacterial pneumonia. So just how strong is Dr. A's belief about bacterial pneumonia, and how do we attempt to quantify it? Loosely, we break probability into the following categorical segments and their associated rough numerical equivalents. Dr. A feels that the probability of pneumonia is likely, which we see ranges from 67 to 90 percent. Let's arbitrarily set this to 80 percent for this example to make the math simple. Expressing this probability in terms of odds, we get 4 to 1. That is, we take 0.8 over 1 minus 0.8, which is 0.8 over 0 0.20, and that simplifies to 4 to 1. Now what do we do with this information? Is any additional testing warranted, or should Dr. A go ahead and treat? Here are some rules of thumb. When the prior probability is either very unlikely or very likely, we generally do not need additional testing. We either don't treat if the disease is very unlikely, or do treat if it is very likely. An exception to this is as follows. If the disease in question is extremely deadly or morbid, and the diagnostic test is relatively safe, it is prudent to obtain the test to be near certain that the disease is absent. Conversely, if a disease is very likely, but the appropriate treatment is high risk or noxious, it is prudent to obtain a diagnostic test to be near certain that the disease is present before we move forward with treatment. Now what do we do about the intervening categories? Diagnostic testing is most useful when our pretest probability falls in this broad range. As a rule of thumb, an effective diagnostic test moves the clinician to the next more or less likely category. Note that we will use this idea throughout the course as we evaluate whether our machine learning models are clinically useful. Since Dr. A feels pneumonia is likely, this is an appropriate situation to obtain a diagnostic test. A chest x-ray is ordered and the results are positive. How does this influence Dr. A's belief? we can quantify the change in belief by using the likelihood ratio as follows. To update our prior belief, we multiply the prior odds by the likelihood ratio to obtain our posterior odds. We can now express this in terms of a posterior probability as follows. Note that the results of our chest x-ray have moved our belief about the presence of disease to the next more likely category, very likely. To summarize, We've introduced the concepts of probability, likelihood, and odds to begin establishing a common language and thinking process between physicians and machine learning practitioners. And we've used Bayes' theorem to describe a systematic approach to clinical decision making. In the next lecture, we'll learn how likelihood ratios can be calculated using the results of our machine learning experiment.